Welcome to the Big Geek Podcast. I am your host, Ron Avis, and with me as always is my co-host, Nick Wright. And today we're going to talk about the biggest gaming disappointments of our lives. <laughs> Dramatic. <laughs> You know, we've talked about exciting things in previous episodes, like E3, then your expectations are sky high. So I thought, why don't we have an episode where we talk about our biggest disappointments? Hmm, disappointments. Yeah, and, you know, we're not, neither one of us are like ones to like shit on things, typically. Yeah. You know, we're, we're pretty positive, and we give people the benefit of the doubt, but there have been times where we've been completely effed over. <laughs> I would say I feel strongly about it. To put it bluntly. This topic is just, we're going to air some grievances, man. And we're going to talk about our top five most disappointing things in gaming. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to get things kicked off right away with possibly my most disappointing thing. And that was the Nintendo Power Glove. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the Power Glove. The Power Glove was it's Con so bad. <laughs> yeah, from the wizard. Damn the wizard. I, I guess I blame it all on the wizard because they made it seem so cool with Lucas. You know, he pulls out. He's got his own little freaking case. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> it, he, it's not enough that he just pulls it out of his gaming cabinet. Yeah, it's like dry ice or something. And yeah. like, it up. <laughs> like plutonium or something. <laughs> yeah, it might as well. Like, into you know, like Doc Brown hands it to him. <laughs> it's from the future. <laughs> but it, it looked so cool. And you know, it did look like it was from the future. You know, I'll be honest. I have never used one. Well, I guess you never played mine. I, no, I don't think so. Well, I, I returned mine. It just, I remember that. And... Uh, because it was a huge gift item for me. I got it for my birthday, I think. And, uh, you know, so, like, I want to talk about, yeah, like, so you brought up the wizard. It's a great entry point into what I thought the power glove was going to be. <laughs> I imagined me, like, you know, like, driving like the kid was in the game. Uh, and then the commercials came out, and they show, like, a guy, like, punching. You know, they showed mm. Mike Tyson's punch out. And I thought, what a great idea. You know, I got my glove on, and I'm throwing punches. I and remember it had, like, an actual D-pad and buttons on the side is that just how it worked um well i'll get into like how it worked for sure it, it was really awful so you know i, I was hyped mm -hmm. really really hyped and uh to be honest it was probably my first experience in life where if something's too good to be true it probably is yeah and i'm expecting this like future technology you know to come into my house at the price of like 70 dollars or whatever it was <laughs> And, and function like it did in the commercial. Okay, so you put it on, you actually did wear it, and uh, then they came, there were like little sensor bars. So, you know, you had to Velcro them to your TV. Oh, okay. So it, it did detect motion. Okay. The thing was, it just didn't do it very well. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, it, you know, it had this really big instruction manual, if I remember correctly. It was really kind of hard to follow from the get-go. Like, so it wasn't like as simple as like, well, I move my hand and then the character moves his hand. It, you, you could, I think you programmed it and you could, if you flicked it a certain way, it would like do an A command, oh. like from the game. So okay. you could play the game technically, but you're not really like throwing punches. And so the the sensors were really just but, there to but see you if you had moved to it. assign it. Yeah. It, it wasn't just a, you know, like you look at the guide and do this motion for an A, do this motion for yeah, a B. Yeah, I remember just being really turned off because it was confusing, I thought. Yeah. It, it wasn't like a simple, like, plug it in and play. Like, you, you there was, like, a learning curve to it. That yeah, I had for a no young, idea about For it a was. young kid, it just was a huge turn off right off the bat. Yeah. Um, and I, maybe I'm miss may, maybe I'm not remembering this correctly, but I'm pretty sure, like, there was some functionality to it that required some programming. Um, I didn't keep it long enough to like really play it to to develop a lot of memories because I, I played it for like one game and like knew I knew I'd been duped. I knew it wasn't what I thought it was. And in fact, I ended up having to play like with a little controller on the arm because I mean, it was a functioning deal. <laughs> Just take it off and play it like that. <laughs> I'm holding a hand in my lap playing it like that is pathetic. So uh, the power glove for me was my most disappointment most disappointing thing in gaming ever yeah. um it, it just crushed me dude it i was a sad little boy the power 
power glove for your NES. Now you and the games are one. The power glove. Everything else is child's play. See the power glove in the hot new movie The Wizard starring Fred Savage. <laughs> even even more disappointing than when you met RoboCop at the at the auto show. Oh my god, like you remember that? Where the guy pants. <laughs> <laughs> They hired like a buy, <laughs> like a like a Halloween mask and gray sweatpants. Holy <laughs> shit, dude, that is so funny. I gotta tell a story real quick. So you know, car shows were a big thing. They don't do them so much anymore. But at a car show, they would always have like a big draw, like you know the the Carl Casper, like dun 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 dun, 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 dun and the guys like coming on. It's like meet you know the Cincinnati Bengals cheerleaders <laughs> and Pee Wee Herman, and like right. but they would never actually get the real actors. The Batmobile, yeah, or they'd get the Batmobile or the General Lee or right. something. And you went. It was a collection. You know, like you were just meant to go and take it for what it was. But when you're a kid, you're like, holy shit, they said Robocop. And I was Robocop's Robo- going to be there. <laughs> I was like, Robocop crazy. So, you know, I remember getting to the car show and, you know, it was like in a convention center. So it's like divided up into the wings. And I was just like, Mom, Mom, I got to find Robocop. I got to find Robocop. So she's like, yeah, yeah, okay. So we, we find where Robocop's supposed to be, but he's like on a break or something. So, you know, I'm like instantly disappointed. I was like, Robocop will be back in, you know, 15 minutes. So I was like, all right, all right, let's go take a look at this Batmobile, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I hear like an announcement, like Robocop is now back or whatever. So I go back to it. And <laughs> he brings out like a jam box or something. <laughs> it sets it down. And the jam box was meant to be like his voice. And the, you know, like when Robocop would walk, it was real weighty. Yeah. And he'd be like, yeah. Oof, yeah. Oof, oof. Like, so he. He was wearing like this cheesy like Halloween costume, <laughs> like, you know, level like plasticky. It Which wasn't keep in mind the time, you know, the, the Halloween costumes then weren't like Halloween costumes now either. No, they were. They were like if you wanted to be He-Man, you wore just basically a plastic He-Man mold, like face with, a <laughs> with string the rubber in the band back. string in the back. rubber band hurting the shit out of your head. <laughs> but like Robocop's wearing this really cheesy like. Not even good enough for a B movie style. Like, I mean, there was like no money in this thing. <laughs> I, I kind of felt bad even as a kid. Like, oh, that poor guy. He's kind of <laughs> pretend to be RoboCop. He's not even wearing like a real RoboCop costume. But it would have been great if he wore sweatpants. <laughs> he might have been. <laughs> but oh god, that, that was that, maybe that was my first you know introduction to like, oh, I've been duped. They aren't really gonna get RoboCop. <laughs> Oh my god, that is so funny. Thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, but that's, so that's my first disappointment. And instead of previous episodes where I would do my whole list and then we'd go to your, you know, yours, or we're, we're just going to alternate. So that, that was my first big disappointment. Power Love and Robocop. Robocop, what was your first big disappointment? Um, yeah, well... I didn't really put these in order. Uh, I didn't either. Yeah, so I, I don't. I know. just let off with Power Glove because it's so damn disappointing. I, I I don't know as far as time frame, but this is definitely like definitely the first that popped in my mind when we were coming up with these topics. It was uh, man, the Neo Geo Pocket. Well, it, but now mind you, I love my Neo Geo Pocket. Great little handheld. But that I imported. The Japanese Neo Geo Pocket, which came out in here, I wrote it down. October of nineteen ninety. Yeah, the timeline's important to this story. Yeah, so October of nineteen ninety eight is when the Neo Geo Pocket came out in Japan, and so I, I I don't know if I ordered it, you know, right away or whatever, but it, it was the end of the year nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, and you didn't just go to like Babbage's or. Toys R Us to get your Neo Geo. Like you had to actually yeah. import it in from. Yeah, and, and Japan. it wasn't online either. You had to phone call it. <laughs> oh lord, dude! Like was, wow. But anyway, it's a big deal. It, it, yeah. So anyway, but so then, they and, and so this was the monochrome. This is black and white, like the Game Boy, right? Right. They come out with the Neo Geo Pocket Color, March of the very next year, nineteen ninety nine. So so <laughs> within months. <laughs> You get, they went back black and white to color. And so, yeah, March, which is my birthday, by the way. Right. Know, and so, it, March, the Extra co- sand in color the face. version comes out, and it's like, son of a. You know, it's like, 
<laughs> You're like Ralphie from A Christmas Story. <laughs> <laughs> Crummy commercial, I, son of a bitch. I just bought this. Like, and how much was it? Do you remember? I don't remember. No, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but, and, and you didn't. You, it's not like you could just take it to uh, sell it on eBay and recoup some of that money and rebuy it. You're just kind of stuck with so, it, right? And I, I just I bought the color version, and I've I've still got both to this day. Oh, so Neo Geo like fucked you, and you said yes, please, man. <laughs> 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 Whatever you got me. Oh man, that's crazy. But and I do I remember too, like when the color one came out. It, you know how I am. I keep like the boxes of like. Everything. Oh, me too. I, you know, and, not not to the extent of you. Like you've got them from way way back. I, I just the color one came, and I put the black and white one back in the box like it's brand new. <laughs> it did the walk of shame back to wherever the boxes live. Where do, where do those and, boxes and live? Just by the way, put it on a shelf in the basement somewhere. It, um, most of the stuff is kind of storage like container. My my museum. I've got like upstairs is like my kind of. I guess man cave kind of thing where do me a favor um i don't know if this museum has come up yet in a po- an episode but uh it is something that you take a lot of great pride in you've got to send me a picture of the museum and i'll upload them and show them in okay. the video yeah i'll, I'll take a picture. i, I want to people got to see this it, thing it's a shrine of everything may, geeky that we love yeah it may need a few pictures oh yeah i'm sure it, it may need a, you don't have a wide a enough angle <laughs> I'm sure, man. I'm sure. I need to clean a little bit too. So okay, but yeah, we can do that. But yeah, so the Neo Geo Pocket, man. I mean, but like I say, I love the system. Was it worth it? Did it the was, color meet like was the it? color's great? And I mean, it had a great games. I love like the little kind of chibi, kind of cute versions of like King of Fighters, and and it had. Um, it was actually the first of the SNK versus Capcom games to come out when they you know made that deal that they would each make their own kind of version of SNK versus Capcom, Capcom versus SNK. Yeah, that, they really that supported that pocket thing. pretty well. I mean, for, you know, um, not a lot of companies have been able to survive, like come out with a new system all their own, you know, like uh, NEC tried it with Turbo Graphics. Yeah. Uh, 3DO tried it, you know, Electronic Arts tried it with Long, with, at least they had Electronic Arts. SNK, you know, they have their large library of titles, but, um, you know, they, they made it happen. They, that was uh it's certainly a disappointing memory, I'm sure. I mean, it, it's a great little system, but yeah, to, bittersweet. Like to you're come happy out with to have your the updated color. version months later. Oh, it's God. like, come on, guys. That's really awful. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess I'll take a turn. Okay. Uh, your turn. So my my next really big disappointment was, and I I alluded to it in a previous episode before was, and holy shit, we're going back to RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> RoboCop was screwing me in 1987, <laughs> man. That was like a really bad year for me as a kid like okay robocop let me down at the fairgrounds but surely the robocop video game will be great the arcade game was great oh the arcade (laughs) game was fantastic you know like data east made the arcade game and they had a reputation for making some really good arcade games and some bad boys bad boys was a favorite of mine um and you know they would port them to nintendo and they would be okay but in this case they didn't develop the game for nes they um, licensed it out to another published uh, developer, Ocean. Ocean. Who is like Notable awful for many terrible games. Terrible they were movie like licensed games the like Pelican Adam's Family. Of, of video game developers. Oh, yeah, the Pelican third party <laughs> peripherals. Yeah, they're just the shit. Like, I gotta play with the Pelican? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't I get the officially licensed Nintendo one? Sorry, man. I don't like you as much as I like him. <laughs> But yeah, the, the RoboCop game that came out, I was really excited for it. And again, um, no magazines to warn me that it's a turd. Right, uh, no, yeah. no internet pre-buzz. I don't even think I've ever even played the game. It's terrible, man. And I'll, I'll probably like in, throw in a clip or something of like this piece of shit in action. <laughs> but you know, he it was nothing like the RoboCop arcade game. You know. <sighs> really it all just kind of like starts and ends right there like i was just disappointed like i popped the cartridge in uh and like the way he moved it wasn't animated very well like you yeah. know like there were like his like he was very animated in the arcade game yeah. there was weight and heft and, to him oh man and my favorite is like always because you know you start out in the arcade game you know you're you're walking along you're punching and then you get to that like halfway point the up, leg you know, opens up yeah. oh so cool. i was waiting for that moment and in the in the NS, nes game like it's just so cheesy it's 
it's you know it's kind of like in the ninja turtle arcade game we were talking about the clanging wasn't the same yeah, yeah. you know it was like the nes it was like the dumbed down version of like the the you know arm the leg opening up and the gun coming out it just none of it felt right yeah. it felt like he was shooting spitballs not shooting this <laughs> badass you know like machine gun pistol thing yeah. um and uh, i i think you could jump which I don't think you could in the arcade. No, yeah, you could jump. Or maybe it was the other way around. Maybe you couldn't. There was a mechanic in the game that was completely absent. Maybe it was jumping. Pretty sure you could. Yeah, I'm trying to think now, but I'm pretty sure you could. Well, it it was it was a big steaming pile of crap. It it was one of those first instances where like I I was warned by like who was making the game. I know if I saw certain developers on the box, like I had to temper my expectations. Well, but big did time. you know that at the time? No, I didn't. So much. I mean, that's my know, point. Like, like now, I oh right, it was my right, first experience saying. with that. Like yeah. you know, you, you're you know in the as a in the, kid, you don't know to stay away from ocean. As a Nintendo fan, you know you had Capcom and Nintendo and a few other like third parties, but they generally were like they put love into it. Yeah. You know, they, they had that Nintendo official seal of quality that was kind of bullcrap. But, I mean, you, you kind of trusted that it was what you're getting was going to be a decent game. Yeah. And it was one of those first games where, you know, it felt very budget, very fast. You know, like they, they were probably trying to bring it out in time for whatever new movie was coming out. Yeah. Uh, you know, probably not Ocean's Fault. Uh, and they, they, you know, it wasn't the first game they put out, I'm sure. It wouldn't, wasn't going to be the last. Nah, but it was the last time they got any money out of me, I'll tell you that much. Ocean. I'm blaming you, Ocean, you pieces of crap. All right, so that was my uh, second most disappointing. And what was your second B? Okay, um, I, I want to say it, uh, all of mine seem to have this caveat. Because um, <laughs> I want to say the Sega Saturn. But the american release of the sega saturn okay so the american treatment of yeah, the sega because saturn. sega saturn i actually in, ended up importing a lot of the japanese games because there were so uh, you know it was the 90s and fighting games were just the biggest thing there everywhere well and saturn had the really good controller too didn't it like it was really good for f- <laughs> the american one was terrible but the Japanese controller was great. The Japanese always got the best stuff anyway. But, but they always it got did, it first. They always got it. It better. did have that uh, in being the '90s and Street Fighter II is the hot thing. It did have that six button Street Fighter II layout. Yeah, you three know, on, on three on the top, American three on the bottom. And Japanese, but mm-hmm. the, but the Japanese was definitely a, a tighter yeah, the, the, controller. The game, the buttons were a little mushier, I guess, on the, the American version. Yeah, I mean the American one, it was like it felt like just a, a hunk of plastic. There, it was like a hollow hunk of plastic where uh, the Japanese one was just a better feel. I don't know. But, better uh, quality build yeah. to it. Uh, I'm with you on the Sega Saturn, man. I, I remember uh, I used my graduation money to buy one of those. Well, and they rushed it. I mean, it just popped up out of nowhere because they were scared about the PlayStation coming out. Yeah, and you, so we were they talking were about like, how cool it was to like get a surprise release. Yeah, in, and, in, and like, that E3. was a surprise release. Oh, yeah. They, they were trying to get out ahead of, I guess... Uh, Nintendo and Sony. They they brought that out before they had said they originally would. It just what PlayStation's coming out. Oh no, you don't. We're coming <laughs> out first, and we're gonna we're gonna come out with Bug. <laughs> oh God, Bug was awful, and, and that was the game that was on all the magazine covers and stuff. So like, again, you know, me being a naive kid, like the way it, the way I understand it is, you know, publishers, gaming journalism back then was not what it is today. You had to play ball back then a lot more. Like journalism and gaming now is, I think, treated more seriously. Yeah. Um, you have like sites like Kotaku and things. They really do good gaming journalism, and they don't play favorites. And you know, if, if you know you didn't want to, if a company wasn't going to adver- advertise with you, then so what? Screw it. We're not going to go hype up your piece of crap game that we think is no good. Well, Bug kind of got that tr- royal treatment. You know, like it was, it, it was awful. It was a half baked game, just like the system, like you said, wasn't mm-hmm. ready. Um, but I, I got it because for the promise of Daytona, uh, which you know was a pretty good port of the arcade. I forget, to be fair, I forget what I got like at launch, like at Virtual first. Fighter, maybe. And maybe I, I don't. I don't even think I got it like right away, but I got it pretty quickly. It, when did Night Warriors come out? Because I want to say maybe that was like the first game that I finally got for it. I think I bought Night Warriors. I feel like that was ninety six. Was yeah, because I, I don't think I got the Saturn right away. I think I bought it with Night Warriors whenever it came out. Yeah, and that would have been around 96. And then I'm from sure. there, 
then I was getting all those imported Japanese fighting games. That, like there was, uh, well, X Men: Children of the Atom came mm-hmm. out here. Yeah. But uh, I mean, there there was Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter and uh, all, all the King of Fighters games. 90, the, 96, 97, 98. I want to say that the Sega Saturn was like the beginning of the end of for Sega. I think it might have been hubris because you know they they were having all that success with Genesis. And then they they kept trying to extend the life of the Genesis with all these crazy add-ons like the 32x. Yeah. Uh, they pushed that out the door. Yeah, you you mentioned the add-ons because uh, that was something that came with some of those like King of Fighter games was like a RAM kind of cartridge that kind of boosted the power mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah, that they didn't even do that because there was that, that cartridge slot that was in the back of the Saturn. Yeah, and I don't think they ever did anything with that for the American one. But you could put in that extra little RAM. Did it? Was it backwards compatible? Did it play Genesis games? I don't remember. No. Okay. No. no. Okay. Um, that would have been cool if it did, I guess. But but yeah, so you could get that little boost for games that they these fighting games that they had in Japan, and they didn't ever do that here. Yeah, I don't know what Sega was thinking, man. They really they were just so concerned with being out first. And they were, you know, trying to make it sound really powerful graphically when really, in fact, it was very inferior graphically yeah, yeah. to both the PlayStation and the N64, which come out a little later. Um, but yeah, just Sega Saturn, what a disappointment. Mm. And you were, you know, it was a brand new system, so you were really kind it, of stuck uh, with it for a while. I think it had the first analog controller, though, didn't it, with Knights? Oh, that's true. We could thank it for that, I suppose. Because, yeah. yeah, Knights did come with that special controller. Yeah. Um, so you know ah, that's notable i guess so, first analog. so yeah so i mean yeah there's a caveat with it but like if you look at all the saturn games i got i have maybe like two american games and like all the rest are japanese games i think i had daytona and it's and because Bug. they didn't even come out here though it's not like you know that i just chose the japanese version over the american or because because sometimes i did get a japanese game just because it came out first like I did that a few true, times, true. like with the PlayStation, with like the Tekken games. Like I got the the import for like Tekken two. Cause yeah, games are wait. released very much like on the same day nowadays. But back then it was always yeah, like Japan. You, you would get always them first. got them first, and for whatever reason, you know, I was like, I want it now, so I'm gonna get the Japanese one. And it's a fighting game, so you don't really need to worry too much about nah, reading to, Japanese. The, text. the translations didn't matter. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, like the games like in this library of the what I got, you just they weren't released in the states. So the Sega Saturn US was one of your five biggest disappointments. Yes. And that's a good one. That that was going to be on my list, too. Uh, so that's a good pick. Um, for my third pick, I'm going to go with... Uh, there's there's going to be a run of... Uh, well, so far, everything's been NES-related. This is not going to be any different. The uh, Dragon's Lair for the NES. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. And yeah, I, I've played that. Again, and had no idea what it was going to be. They seemed... They seem so more focused on let's make beautiful animation with that than like actually being Dragon's Lair. I should cut them some slack because I think they did an okay job with what they had. It it was very hard. And when I say beautiful animation, I mean <laughs> we're talking about NES sprites, but yeah. smoothly. It was smooth animate, animation. Lots of frames. Lots of frames, you almost know, to not, a fault. Like <laughs> yeah, you know, which made it really slow. Right, you couldn't react quickly yeah. to anything. Like you couldn't super, pull back. Super super slow because they've got like so many frames for everything, rather than just like a four frame walk or whatever. Yeah, that, that I was so obsessed with playing Dragon's Lair at home for a long time. Uh, so when I found out they were going to have an NES, you know, Dragon's Lair, and like I say, I don't know what I was thinking. It's not like that I they could have ever pulled off full motion video on yeah, an NES. No way, no. But way. I just I was <laughs> blinded by the the Dragon's Lair name. I was like, right. well, how could they not make it that way? Yeah, I mean, how we, can you do a Dragon's, Dragon's Lair game Lair. anyway? Well, they showed us that you could make a Dragon's Lair game in this really average very difficult platform style game it's very hard that i never beat i mean i'd get past yeah, the drawbridge I, I didn't beat it yeah and uh so that that was one of those and they're one of those instances where i was fooled by the name and mm-hmm. then i got a product that was very very subpar yeah but yeah dragon's lair eluded me on the nes i would have to wait many many years to get a decent port of that so that's my third most disappointing thing nick what was yours um 
and I've, I've already kind of talked about this, I think, in another episode, but I, I'll just kind of reiterate again. Uh, Street Fighter 1. And and this was like kind of a <laughs> backwards in time. pile on Street Fighter 1 some more. Yeah, and this was kind of a backwards in time kind of thing because I never played Street Fighter 1 until, it, it, you know, it was after Street Fighter 2 was out. And Street Fighter 2 is the king of everything. And, you know, everybody's playing it and it's great. And so I thought, I, so, okay, I love Street Fighter 2. How did this all start? What's Street Fighter 1 like? So finally, I think it was like on a vacation, like one year, that we happened to stop at like, you know, it was like a gas station or a truck stop or something or other. And, you know, they had like a like maybe two or three arcade games at those things. Yeah, usually. back in the day, every convenience yeah. store had at least two arcades. Yeah, and, like. and, and this one, it actually had Street Fighter 1. It was the first time I'd ever seen it. So, oh, really, you know, cool. And then I, so I tried to play it. And, and dropped in your quarter and, well yeah and, it, and so I, I drop in the quarter but you know I'm having an issue trying I can't pull off fireballs I can't hardly do anything and it, it moves really choppy and, so was uh, the character select screen like similar to Street Fighter 2 or was... oh no nothing like Street Fighter 2 because you only played Ryu or Ken oh. and I, I can't remember right now but I don't even think really you chose like for a one player game I think it was pretty much if you're playing a two-player game versus somebody else, the the other person is Ken. Gotcha. I think you're just pretty much Ryu. So player two is Ken and player yeah, one is Ryu. Yeah. Okay. So pretty big departure, it, right? From the the only code. thing you do choose is like uh, you choose like which country out of four that you want to go to. Oh, so you could pick your level. Yeah, and th- there was like two people at each country, and so you could pick like uh, well, U.S., China, Japan, and England. And uh, okay. and then go from there, but yeah, it was it's terrible. Well, I I know it's bad because I dropped in a little clip from yeah. when you talked about it before. Yeah, so we don't need to really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we know that it's terrible, and everybody knows it's terrible. That doesn't make it very any less more any less disappointing for sure. It it definitely left its mark on you. <laughs> you were like, please please do a good uh, give a good remake. <laughs> yeah, do it do it justice, man. That. The heritage, respect the heritage. Yeah. <laughs> Do something with it. All right, so yeah, that everybody wants to see Geki again. I mean, yeah. anyway, we we already talked. About yeah, we went that. through the lineup. Yeah, we talked. I, about I'd it. like to see it, but I mean, I, I'm not gonna go out. I'm not gonna seek it and find it. Like, what could you play that on nowadays? Oh, what the original game? Yeah. Um, I don't even really know if they ever have included it in any of those Street Fighter 2 They just erased it <laughs> from memory. Street Fighter 2 was the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Other than like Fighting Street on the Turbo Graphics, I don't I'm not sure. Do you remember that NES game that came out that had I think it said Street Fighter on the box and it was Oh, just... Street Fighter 2000 10? Yeah. Yeah. I, that always kind of made me think there was like cuz it was Capcom. It it's related <laughs> oh it is related yeah okay. it's in the like, same universe I, I think like the character's name is ken or something silly it's i mean it's it's like it's related but it's not you know okay I mean, gotcha it's, like the thinnest thread is holding it to yeah. the to, to it yeah <laughs> all right so that's you know a disappointment right, so, so on, disappointing on you'd bring it up twice yeah on to you my fourth uh, most disappointing thing was um sega cd A game. Um, at this point, I was a pretty big Sega kid. Full motion video. Full motion video was the rage, dude. Um, if it's a CD, we got to get full motion video. <laughs> pretty much. And that, that was the big move from cartridge to CD. Sega started it out. Um, and it was the very full motion video. Like it, it demoed very nicely. But man, Sonic CD was great. Yeah, well, I, again, some caveats. Like, Sega CD was a disappointment because it was a $300 add-on, basically. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, they promised some things, like they would put out, like, a Mortal Kombat game, which I assumed would be better than the Sega Genesis version. But they gave you your Dragon's Lair, unlike NES. Yeah, so 
Sega CD gave me Sonic CD, which is a great Sonic game, probably my favorite. And it finally gave me my Dragon's Lair, a very, very close to the arcade. But without the uh, elevator. No elevator board, sequence, right? yeah. yeah. Who cares about that, though? Oh, I do. You got to have no. everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's not fully 100% authentic. And my brother was like a huge, huge Dragon's Lair aficionado. Like, he'd beaten the original and the second one. Uh, so he was my authority on Dragon's Lair. And I showed it to him. And, uh, well, first he was like, there's no joystick. This sucks. That was like his first thing. And I'm like, but look at the full motion video. It's Laserdisc, baby. Uh, so he right away shit all over it. Like, <laughs> you know, there's no joystick. I can't play that. So um, I went out. And, uh, you know, I didn't have my for, like, you know, the Sega Genesis. I found, like, some generic-ass Pelican style. What, just for the sake your brother could play Dragon's Lair? Yes, I wanted to impress him so much. So I bought, like, whatever I could afford. It was real cheesy. But it had, like, that kind of clickiness to it. Right. So he was like, all right, I'll try your Dragon's Lair. Uh, but he was right. It wasn't the same without the joystick. It did make it more enjoyable. But, uh, you know, he was really impressed. We <laughs> went through to the end of the game. We beat um, the dragon, saved so, Daphne. So he approved it. He approved. And uh, so it meant a lot to me. I don't know why, but it meant a lot to me. Because well, cool. that, that was one of the things that we bonded over was Dragon's Lair. Right. So to be able to play Dragon's Lair, you know, and, you know, he, he went to the arcades and played it. Mm -hmm. And it was expensive to play, and it was always broken down, apparently. Yeah, I, I know. I just... And it, yeah, I mean, it, what it was it a dollar to play? Or, yeah, and you know, I mean, back then, that, and you got like that three was lives, a huge deal, and it was very much a um, trial and error game. And because I remember, like, I would play, and you know, I would just instantly die. I was just really too young to really know what I'm doing. You know, same. I'd seen it at a few places, and I would, you know, by then I don't think it was a dollar to play anymore. It might have just been like a fifty cents or something. So I'd. I'd At put the time, it, it was like the only game to be that much. Yeah. Because I mean, back when, I mean, you know, arcades are pretty much dead now, but then oh, yeah. later on. Doornail. I mean, because there's like that uh, Star Wars pod thing, you know, and, and any new arcade game that comes out now, it's like always a dollar because it's some yeah. big fancy gimmick. Yeah, yeah, that's how you get people but, to play nowadays. But then, that was a huge deal that it was so much. I, I don't know if it was the very first ever to start charging more than the traditional quarter but it very well may could have been. Yeah. And uh, there, there were games that came like when we were old enough to go to the arcades on our own. Like you said, like if it was a game you sat down in, you know, if there was like a cockpit or whatever, if there was any kind of gimmick or if it was like a gun game, it was going to be more than a quarter. Yeah, like maybe 50 cents. But, but in like 1983 or whenever that game came out, yeah, um, to charge a dollar is really crazy. And, uh, you know, here we were in in our, you know, basement playing Dragon's Lair, at, you know, at home. And it was a pretty decent quality. So I love you, Sega CD, for finally giving me my Dragon's Lair. I don't even think there's been a... Has there been a release since? Oh, mm -hmm. there's been lots of... Yeah, I mean, they, okay. it comes out on the computer, like, P, like PC CD-ROM, PC DVD. Well, that's yeah. the thing, too, is I think there were versions and of Dragon's Lair on Xbox PC. Xbox 360 arcade hit finally come out with it and oh that's right the elevator and everything yeah um, well by then i just didn't care anymore, yeah it, it's blu-ray has had it it's come out quite a few times now and there were a few other titles for sega cd that were good i like road uh, i think it was called road rage that road, right. road, Event, road blasters maybe is what it was called i don't know but it was like a it was a full motion video game you were like this little red car and you just you know it was like one it was like action did it have a hard driving uh i don't think I like that one. It was fun. It was really fun. And, you know, it's probably one of those games that they promised they would come out on. But the Sega CD, the reason it's on my list is because it it was very expensive. It had a solid start, and then they just abandoned it too early. Yeah. Um, it was really it was really expensive hardware. Not enough people were buying it. Uh, and then they moved on to the, uh, what was the other thing called? The, uh, the, the, uh, knuckles game came out on the uh, 32x oh yeah 32x we were talking about that just a minute ago yeah yeah they, so they they they, they they were doing anything they could to keep the genesis going and i kind of get it but you know sega cd was maybe the first really it was for sure the most expensive gaming system and it wasn't even a full system it was just an add-on it was a cd add-on which was during that craze of when everyone was going to have a cd add-on nintendo famously was going to have one and ended up not uh with with Sony or whatever uh, or Panasonic I can't remember now but 
you know, they were going to have like their own little 3D oh, or CD yeah. add-on. Um, Panis. Yeah, it was going to be Panasonic. Sony, and then they kind of screwed Sony, and then they went with like Panasonic or something, and then they ended up ditching it all together. Is it Panasonic that made the CDI then? then yeah. And had the terrible Zelda games? Oh, yeah. yeah. The Philips, yeah. Philips CDI. Philips. Yeah, Philips CDI. Terrible, man. Terrible. Yeah, not Panasonic. Yeah. Philips. Sorry. Um, so, you know, Sega CD earns its spot on my five most disappointing. Um, it, it, it just wasn't enough. And uh, I, it was a big clunky yeah. thing that just kind of sat over and reminded me on the side. I never sold it. I kept it. But they it had a few gems, but not enough. A couple of gems gave me Dragon's Lair. <laughs> mm. For you, man. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, that was my uh, number four. Uh, what was your fourth most disappointing? Well, and this one, it's um, it's really kind of a slight disappointment because it's really it's a decent enough game. But I, I'm going to say Halo 2. And I want to say that mainly for one reason. And that one reason is the pistol. Oh man, because the pistol was the weapon in the first Halo. In Halo game. One, yeah. I mean, we just we would take anybody down with the pistol in Halo One. Some yeah. Good quick headshots with the pistol. We got so good. We were like pretty much infamous with that damn pistol. Like we couldn't get anybody to play us anymore. <laughs> you know, we'd get land parties together. Uh, you know, yeah, you just... and, and our people would swear we were cheating. Yeah. Because, you know, we were, like, basically sniping people with pistol from half the map away. They'd be on Blood Gulch, and you could see, like, this, like, little tiny speck of a, like, Master Chief, and they'd just go down. Quick, bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, headshot, headshot, down. So, you know, yeah, I, I remember that's a good pick. And so, Cause yeah, Halo when 2 Halo was, 2 came out, it, they nerfed the pistol, and it just was not the same. Yeah, that... And, and none of the Halo games since then has the pistol been as powerful. We'd always get excited that maybe it was. Like, okay, try the pistol. Oh, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, and then, oh, it feels good. Yeah. It's not the same. Yeah, it's got the same feel of the pistol, but still nerfed. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, it was a decent enough game. But for the pistol alone, it, it disappointed me. It so. was disappointing enough for the game to be overall disappointing. Like, you, can you forgive the game for nerfing the pistol so bad? Could you overlook that? You know, and I'll be honest that I never really played the multiplayer much at all in Halo 2. Me neither. When we played it all the time in we Halo tried. 1. Yeah, yeah we I, tried. I just didn't like it. And it was a very... And, and that's the one that introduced Xbox Live. Yeah, it was a seminal game for Xbox Live. Yeah. It was, it, And to this day, I think a lot of people look at Halo 2 as like the godfather of, of you know first-person shooter consoles. It, it just, because of the pistol, I just wasn't interested. And I, I'm sure like 7 out of 10 people would prefer Halo 2 to Halo 1. But I mean, those you just can't beat those days when we were oh, like... Oh, and it, is that the one that introduced the sword? Or was um, that 3? No, I think it was 2. Okay, cool. yeah, we they all just sort of meld together, they do. don't they? Yeah. Those Halo games, uh, you know, they were all fun games, and it was like a summer popcorn movie. Like you, you play it, and then you instantly forget about it. None of the games matched the first. It's just that's what it was. The first one was so special. The mm -hmm. second one came out, and it did things more. Everything was better looking. Yeah, I mean, the if when you're playing through the campaign mode in that very first stage on Earth, I mean, it's great. I love that board. But yeah, that was the promise of the game too. Like you were, you know, the the, the covenant was bringing the fight to Earth. Yeah, and it was just like, it was amazing. Yeah, it was good. Know, but the pistol, <laughs> <laughs> the pistol wasn't good. And and I, you know, I didn't use the pistol a ton in the campaign modes. It was just it ruined the co-op. I mean, it ruined the multiplayer. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good pick, man. The the Nerf pistol pistol deserves a so slot on my top five as well. I guess if I were to rethink it. All right, so I want to move on to my fifth yeah, on, to you. on my list. Um, the fifth most disappointing was a, a game called Two Human. Um, it was a Xbox 360 game. I remember the name, but I don't. You would remember because any it, more it's than one that. of those games that was in development hell for a very long time. Right. Um, I don't remember the E3, but it was maybe. Well, the history of it is it was, it was in development for so long it was going to be a GameCube game. Okay. It was going to be a GameCube game if I remember correctly, and uh, Microsoft bought it because they were in, they were coming out. They needed some you know exclusive titles. Um, all they had really was Halo. Still, Gears of War wasn't a thing yet, uh, and this game looked really good. You know, they showed a preview at E3. Uh, it looked fantastic, 
everybody got really excited. Like, this is going to be the next big thing. This is going to be the next Halo. And it, it was, you know, it, it was the hype. And when the game eventually did come out in 2008, you know, I, I probably saw it first in magazines and stuff like 2003, 2004. By the time it came out, it was just like, we got to get this game out. We got to make some money back on this thing. And Gears of War came out like about a year before that, and it really kind of set the bar, the high bar of what a good action third person mm-hmm. shooting game should be. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you got Gears of War just raking in the dough and everybody's playing that, and even by the time Two Human came out, they were probably working on Gears of War 2. Nobody gave a crap about Two Human. Mm-hmm. And it's just one of those like classic, you know, don't get your hopes up at E3 because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, whether a game's going to be as good as it looks. And it was a very mediocre game, and I, I think we played it maybe for a little bit. Yeah, it, it may be one that uh, yeah, I've played at your place, but maybe it was a demo. not terribly Remember memorable. Remember back in the day, like you used to be able to get like discs with demos on them yeah. quite often. Yeah. Like If you got an Xbox magazine, you get like a disc with like five, six, seven demos on it. Yeah. It's not really a thing anymore, but... Um, yeah, that, that was a. Uh, I, I look at it as a cautionary tale of not to get too excited, and yeah. that's when I was talking about, you know, E3 in one of our previous episodes. You know, like I'm watching the trailer for that Anthem game, and it looks so amazing. Those particularly those first scenes where you're walking through, you know, like the, I don't know what it is like, like a, some kind of bazaar or something. I don't know. You're, but you're getting your mech ready, yeah. and people are everywhere, and you're walking through the people, and it looks beautiful. And you're like, this is running on some high-end PC. This can't be the real thing because I know in the back of my head, like, too human, man. It was a game that looked really cool, and then by the time it came out, it just, I think it changed some developers. Like, that's never a good sign. It changes hands. Yeah. But there was always that promise, and people bought the game on that promise. Oh, uh, Speaking of changing developers, I mean, that's that whole thing that killed, I think, uh, Aliens, um, Colonial Marines. is. I was not, not thinking about get off subject. No, but. no, that's that's it's completely on, on subject because yeah. that's a game that people were really excited for. And yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be a great game, but then it kept switching hands and mm-hmm. it ended up. Being did you terrible. play it? I never did pe- yeah, play it either. because I heard it's yeah. terrible. Well, I, we I had the super, benefit. Super, super excited about it, but heard the news before I bought it. <laughs> yeah, we we got the early warning system now. It's like the Weather Channel. Like we can see it coming from a mile away. If if a game is going to be good or bad. Uh, that's why most of these disappointments for me at least are games that were older things like things that you didn't have the benefit of reading in advance Mm -hmm. there was no metacritic you know anything like that nowadays like and it's kind of a shame to a degree like if a game doesn't get like a good review right off the bat it's kind of killed out of the gate so Mm -hmm. you know I guess the lesson is make a good game developers (laughs) (laughs) stop trying to pull the wool over our eyes with this pretty (laughs) graphics and stuff so too human you know uh, I, it's a more recent example, so I don't have those deep scar like childhood scars. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my fifth most disappointing. Okay, so mine. Yep. What's your fifth most disappointing, uh, Nick? I'm gonna say uh, Killer Instinct Gold. Combo. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the reason being because of uh, you know I always like Killer Instinct One better than Killer Instinct Two, right? Mm-hmm. And Killer Instinct Gold ended up being based on Killer Instinct 2. I mean, basically it was Killer Instinct 2. I don't even really know what all differences there may have been, if any. But, because, uh, you know, so what your Killer Instinct 1, you're playing it in the arcade, and when it's gone through a track mode, you know, it's got only on the Nintendo Ultra 64. Available for your home in 1995. Only on Nintendo Ultra 64. You know, and so you know that you're excited that this is going to come out on the new... It ends up being called the Nintendo 64. Right, N64, basically. Yeah, instead of the Ultra 64. Not the Dolphin. (laughs) Yeah, so it changed its name. Right. But so... Didn't they change that last second, too? Yeah, I don't remember. Off off topic. But so, yeah, but the Nintendo 64 ends up being delayed. And, uh, you know, by the time it finally comes out, Killer Instinct Gold comes out because it's now been delayed a few years. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I think Killer Instinct was maybe like 1994 
And then finally the Nintendo 64 ends up coming out like around like 96 or 97. So it wouldn't make sense to come out of the gate with a brand new so, system. So Killer Instinct 2 is already out now by this point. So yeah. instead of releasing that old game, they bring out the more recent game. So I get it, but I liked Killer Instinct 1 better. Yeah, because we were left with that Super Nintendo port, which was Oh, yeah. Decent. It's, so, yeah, only on the Nintendo Ultra 64. Well, no, it came out on Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, no, it did actually come out for Super Nintendo. And that's the only thing it came out for until it finally, it when the new Killer Instinct came out on the Xbox One, there was like an emulated version of it. That's finally the first time like it real version isn't that crazy how long it takes sometimes like people go back and release these things is an afterthought really you know just as a bonus that you don't even really care about but for people like me and you we're like holy shit that might be a good reason to buy the game yeah really all we ever got was the watered down version on super nintendo yeah which was fine it was fine The, the thing about that game that i remember the most was like the music and stuff yeah, and they they did include that little CD. That CD, yeah. And, and I listened good. to that CD in my CD player, and I, I yeah. thought it was pretty awesome. They had some good tracks. Um, but those crazy combos and like you know they they got the combos in there and the humilities and all that yeah, humiliation. Humiliation. <laughs> <laughs> you make your opponent dance like that's a humiliating thing. <laughs> or, well, no, I'm thinking now. I'm thinking Mortal Kombat because I was going to say like babalities, but of course that's from fatalities. Right. Um, but yeah, I remember when that was a thing where like you couldn't just like beat an opponent; like you had to demoralize them. <laughs> yeah, you know, whether it be taking off their head yeah, the or humili- making them dance. <laughs> humiliation was way better than a friendship or a oh, friendship. Or what was whatever. up with that? <laughs> You're fighting to begin with. Like, why would you end up with a friendship? Friendship. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the um, the the N64 version of Killer Instinct that never actually happened. Yeah. And you, you look at Gold and you're like, you're not who I thought you were supposed to you're, be. You aren't supposed to be that. You're an imposter. Yeah. All right. So um, those are our, as a collective, 10 most disappointing uh, moments in, in gaming history for us personally. Uh, if you guys had any other disappointments that you know wasn't mentioned, or if you just want to dog uh, yeah. pile on and like, you're like, yeah, yeah let fuck us RoboCop know. 2. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Such a terrible game. I hated the Power Glove. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, also, if you don't mind, you know, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're I'd like to shout out to our awesome communities built already up to around 500. By the time this video comes out, it will be well over 500. So hey, thank you thanks. very, very much. Uh, we're we're very grateful for the support that we've gotten here at the Big Geek mm-hmm. uh, podcast. And uh, I guess you know that's it. You know, we're gonna get back to more positive. You know, we we just had to air our grievances. <laughs> we had to get it off our chest. It feels better. (laughs) Listen, I've been Ron Avis. And this is Nick Wright. And thanks for watching. Have a good day. See ya.